What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TW Motorsports, and yes, we are back on the Trans Am today. So, a couple things have happened since the last time we filmed on the Trans Am. I know it's been a little bit, but um, I've been getting some parts, and I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna show you. So, obviously we got the oil pan off in the last video, and what I did was I ran this to my buddy at 417 Motorsports, and he welded these in, because, like I said, I just, while this side, I, the one right above the oil drain, um, there was tons of thread on it. The other side, there just wasn't, and uh, I just felt more comfortable with having him welded it, welding it in. So um, I ran these in as far as I could, and then he welded on the inside. So it still looks good and uh, still going to work just like um, the kit says it's going to, but just made me feel better. So that's one of the things I had done. The other thing I had is I decided to coat these with a ceramic coating as opposed to wrapping them. I'm not a big fan of wrapping exhaust. And um, so I had them coated and I will list his information down below. He did an amazing job. And um, the guy, the same guy, Blake at 417 recommended him. He's the guy who did my welding, but um, he recommended using him. He says he does a great job and look, he taped this all off so I could still see the hair on speed. I, he just did a great job. So now we need to move on to the turbos. So the turbos in the last video, I kind of stopped because um, these guys, the bolts that came with the kit uh, wouldn't thread into the turbo for the drain line. So we're going to address that today. I did go get some new bolts that you see right here. These are the ones that were supposed to fit it but because I went with the upsized turbo, um, they're not going to. So we're gonna get these on the table. I am gonna to have to um, kind of ream these holes a little just to make them just a hair bigger to get the threads through. So I'll do that off camera and then we'll start assembling this part. So the place where we need to bolt this on is obviously right here. And like I said, I've got the new bolts, but we're gonna to have to clock this um, other end. And in order to do that, there's a snap ring right in here. We're going to loosen that snap ring and put some snap ring pliers in there and tilt this housing to mirror the picture that is in the book. So it specifically says no orientation of compressor housing, turbo housing, and center cartridge. So we need to make sure that all of that is lined up with like it's supposed to be and then we can go ahead and tighten that bolt down for the drain line. So as I said, the picture says to, you're gonna have to clock the inlet and the outlet here, or vice versa. And um, boy, what a pain that was. So 13 millimeters is what it took on the inside. And it still says you may have to tweak it. And then that snap ring, I just don't have a good pair of snap ring pliers. So I'm gonna have to order some. I did get it off and get it clocked somewhat close to where it's gonna be. But you can see I went ahead and got the oil drain on. And so I think, I'm going to move on to the next step, which means that we're going to run these studs in and then there is a um, shield that's going to go on it as well. It's actually like a gasket of some sort. So we'll get it flipped over on its side and see if we can get this next uh, parts in place. Looks like eight millimeter studs and a six millimeter stud. So let's get those on there. Actually, um, I've sent John from Hair on Speed a couple messages about the fitment of, there's like a gasket uh, type material that goes here and then here. And um, I don't love the fitment of them, so I'm going to talk to him and make sure that that's exactly what I'm going to use. If not, um, it's calling for Permatex on this. That may be good enough, and maybe those were for the other turbo kit. But I'm waiting to hear back from him before I go further on this deal. So we're going to switch over to the car at this point, and we will come back to the turbos and the manifolds and whatnot. And like I said, I really need to get a decent pair of snap ring pliers, so that will give me some time to do that as well. But let's move over to the car because we do, unfortunately, have some more cutting. Like I said, we're going to move on to some more cutting that I have to do. So couple areas that we're gonna to have to cut. So when you're looking at the front of the radiator, the pictures in the install manual, while they're pretty decent, um, it, it's kind of an optical illusion with this piece because um, there's an outline and it looks like there's something different. But what it's talking about is on the front side of the radiator here, you can see this piece that used to hold that kind of triangle piece that went to um, your hood latch we're going to be lopping that off because the intercooler has to come down in this area. Well, before we do that, we need to flush this off here. So uh, essentially what I'm going to do, and the, and the book really looks like there's not as much here 
Um, but we're, we're going to cut this guy completely out and make this go straight across. So that is my next step. I'm just going to use a cutoff wheel on my grinder and uh, I am going to go ahead and take this thing that holds the bolt off. Maybe I am. Probably have to go get a flathead screwdriver. Um, we're going to pop that out of the way so we're not having to cut through it. But yeah, unfortunately, you guys know that I, I wasn't happy about having to bend those rails over. But, you know, that's, that's part of this install. So let's go ahead and cut this off and then we'll move to the next piece that we need to cut. Now you can see we've got that cut off and I did take a flap wheel and kind of clean that up. Um, I think probably... I don't know, we'll see, but I, I thought about maybe going all the way and making this flush. This is two pieces of metal that are um, spot welded together, but it doesn't show that in the instructions, so maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm just, I'm picky, guys. Anyway, we need to loosen up these guys. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to remove these clips that hold this line in place, and our next cut is actually going to be on this guy in here. And uh, let me get this out of the way and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, we are going to have to cut a couple spots up top here. Next two areas we're going to have to cut. So you can see I've got the clips off. Um, this right here, so where this starts to bend and go in, we're going to have to cut it right there where the bend is on both sides. And then we actually are going to measure three inches down on both sides and cut it again because we are going to have to roll this over in order to fit that intercooler so it's not a huge deal it's just you know i'm cutting on a car i don't know i'm cutting on a car that i really love so it's always troublesome i guess to me but i'm gonna quit thinking about it i'm just gonna grab the cutter the cutoff wheel and we're just gonna cut a slit up to the top here on both sides and then like i said another three inches down we're gonna bend this up and i'll show you i'm just gonna use a pair of um or actually a crescent wrench and just grab similar to what we did down there on the um, inside, you know, where I complained about on the last video. So we'll get this cut and uh, we'll start bending it. Let's take a look at what we've got so far. So I cut those areas on the side and you can see I've started bending it up. And all I'm doing guys is I'm taking this crescent wrench and um, just going along and bending that lip up. You can see how much we've gained so far. Let me go in a little closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a just a hammer and knock this thing as flat as I can possibly get it. And um, I'm going to have to repaint this area. It's just going to drive me nuts if I don't. So it's, it's not a huge deal. Anyway, once we get done with that, there is another section, but I think I'm going to measure that and I'll show you guys that once I've measured it. But I'm going to go ahead and see how flat I can hammer this and uh, then we'll move on. By hand, I've got this as far as I can get it. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my air hammer and tap it a little bit further to try to flatten it out some more. But I wanted to show you guys, so from this cut, we're gonna go back three inches and we need to make another cut because we're gonna have to fold this up as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, since I have my cutoff wheel on and make that cut, shouldn't take me but just a second. This took like less than 10 seconds to just cut this, it's really thin metal. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that and uh, bend that one up while we're at it. Now I went ahead and cut those other sections that you guys can see right here. So like I said, went down three inches and cut and then folded both sides up. So on both sides here that you're gonna need. And I will tell you guys, once I got my air hammer, this went so much faster, it was ridiculous. So I am probably gonna clean this up with a flap wheel before I paint it. And I probably won't show you guys the paint uh, portion just cause I'm gonna use a rattle can similar to what I did under the hood. And it turned out really well. I just, it's a bummer because I'm gonna have to tape it off. And here you may not see a tape line, but I'll probably grab this section too where that, um, even though we're gonna be bolting something back in place. But I think that's all the cutting we have to do on the car. We only had to cut those sections, this section obviously down here, and then we did have to bend those lips back, which you guys saw in the last video. But uh, I know we've been back and forth, but I've been waiting on some parts, um, and I've been waiting on John from Hair on Speed to respond to me. Guys, he's been great. Uh, I will say one thing about him is I know he's got to be busy. Look, he sells kits. You, you, you've heard his name, right? So he's probably one of the biggest distributors of LS-based kits um, out there. I mean, wh whether it's 5th gen, 4th gen, trucks, Corvettes, CTSVs, um, he's probably the biggest out there. But... Um, he does respond to me instantly. 
Uh, well, I mean, maybe not instantly, but within five to 10 minutes. And it's crazy that somebody that big could do that. But we're gonna move on to, I went ahead and bolted the manifolds on. You can see, man, this is just temporary. I just use the factory mounting hardware and they're not even torqued down because I'll probably be removing them. But we're ready to put the turbos on the manifolds. And to me, because I don't have two people out here, this is the easiest way to hold it while I try to cinch the turbo down. So I actually have, I'll go grab the turbos real quick. They're in the bags over there. Um, we'll put them on this table. I wanna show you guys, we did have to clock them and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I showed you that a little bit earlier, but um, I just wanna show you up close. They are clocked, both of them, the way they need to go. So um, I'll show you that, and then we'll get them into place. Here's what I wanted to show you. I got one of the turbos out. You can see right here there's a snap ring, and I tried to orient it where I can get to it again if we have to make any movements once it's on here. Now, I can always take it off, um, but I really don't want to have to once I get this mounted up because we are going to use, instead of using this that he sent with the kit, I talked to him and it doesn't really match up really well. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be using some um, high temp silicone is what he recommends. And um, let's see here, what is this called? Ultra copper, that's what I'm using. You can see my janky way of taping it off because I opened it earlier. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a bead on here and then we're going to mount this one. This is actually the driver's side one. You can see that the turbo is pointed out, and um, that is how it's going to bolt in place. So I'm going to go ahead and run a bead on here. And then on this guy, um, I talked to him because I went to the bigger turbos, and it didn't come with studs. And so I'm actually, I can use bolts in everywhere except this portion right here because I can't get a bolt in there. So I'm going to go ahead and screw a stud in this back corner but I'm gonna use bolts everywhere else. And if, honestly, if I had a few more studs, um, I don't have any here, I would probably use one back here because I had to maneuver this one. You can see it's still in place. I had to maneuver that to get it where it needs to be. Same thing probably on the other side. Uh, I'll probably have to do the same thing, but for now, let's get a bead of silicone on here and get this thing bolted up. So I've got a bead of that silicone laid right there. And um, I actually chose to put studs in the back. We're gonna use bolts in the front and studs in the back. Like I said, if I had more studs, um, and I could order them if I wanted, John said he would send me some, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it together like this because um, I have bolts that can go in the other part. So I took two of the studs out of the back where the uh, down pipe's gonna bolt, and I can actually use bolts there. They'll actually be easier to access. So um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put this thing up into place and uh, get it at least cinched down. Well, I got this on here and I got as tight as I could get it with just a quarter inch drive. So I think we're good there. I also, obviously it bubbled out along the edges. I wiped that off because that would make me crazy um, to have that on there. And probably you could wait till it dried and wipe it off. But the one thing you need to make sure is that this thing goes in square and it looks like we did. So there's not a whole lot of movement there but you don't want to cinch one side down and then get it like off. So uh, I made sure that I went back and forth, making sure it is as square as you can possibly get it. And uh, we've got it on. And like I said, I took a towel and wiped off the excess. You like, you probably wait till it dried. But anyway, this side's on. And I, I will tell you guys one thing. Um, I used one of these studs, like I said. The problem is, is the nut that goes on the end of those studs is too big to fit in this location. So I ended up going back with a bolt. So we've got three bolts and then one stud on this side, which I, it kind of bums me out because these are 10s and that's a 13, but I can deal with that. Not a huge deal. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that stud that I took out, I'm gonna put it back here and then we'll just go on with a bolt here in this location. So let's go to the other side and duplicate this. A little bit of a change of plan on this one. I got it up in place and realized the very back, the bolt was too long. So you can see that it runs up into the manifold. So what I ended up doing was I took it all back apart and I put a stud up there. So we have a stud in the front, a stud in the back, and then these are two bolts. So. <laughs> Uh, it's a learning experience, guys. So anyway, if, you, um, if you're if you doing one of these, then you might wanna think about trying to put it together. I, I don't know why I did that. I should have just test fit it, ran it down just to make sure before I put uh, silicone on it. So I cleaned it all off and started all over, but still not a huge deal. 
we're just going to um, continue on at this point. We've got everything good and um, I cleaned up same way I did on the other side as best I could. And so uh, let's keep moving. The next part we're gonna be putting on is the actual feed line. And so it, it actually says to do this before you bolt this all together, guys. So, but like I said, I did this uh, because I don't have anybody to hold this while I'm putting it together. So anyway, this face is down. This is the short one and we are on the driver's side. And then this goes together similar to a brake line. So you're gonna have two uh, washers, some crush washers, and then you have a banjo bolt. And so that guy is going to go in the very top. You can see right up here in the turbo, that spot right there. These other two, there's one here and there's one on the other side. Those are actually water inlets. You can leave those open. And then of course we got our drain here on the bottom. But I'm gonna go ahead and snake this in here. Probably not gonna be the easiest thing to get to, but it looks like I have plenty of access to get it tight anyway, which is good. On the other side, it actually says, and, and we'll actually, we'll just talk about that when we get to the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in and snug it down. So just like you would a brake line, you see we have bolt, washer, then the actual line, and then another washer, and then we're ready to go in. And remember, this face is down, so it's gonna go in like this with that end facing down. I'm gonna leave that on there just to make sure no junk or debris gets in it while we're doing the rest of this stuff, um, but then this will seal off the top side. Change of plans. Um, I actually loosened these 13s up here so I could rotate this because I was having issues with um, Actually, this is where it needs to go. Right here, I was having issues with getting that to um, thread in. So, uh, because guys, there was some issues because I went with the bigger turbos and um, I think I got sent a majority of the parts that came with the base turbo. So, not a huge deal. I sent him a message and I'm sure he'll get back to me. So, for now, we can't put the turbo inlets uh, the out, or sorry, the oil inlet on um, because we don't have the right bolt so anyway what i think we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the down pipes on so similar situation here uh, because i used one of my studs in this guy we're going to have to use a bolt here which not a big deal it's the same exact thing uh, but we need to put some rtv on this because that is the way it seals up like i said it come with plates and after talking to him and the actual instructions, it seems that most people and uh, what he recommends is using the RTV. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna put some RTV on actually the turbo, I believe, uh, because the housing's a little bigger and I don't wanna have a bunch of uh, junk back here where I can't clean it off. So let's go ahead and put some stuff on this, get it sealed up. And um, there is a specific side, so the shorter one, actually goes on this side and it's going to have an indention in it it's been um he beat a section in because it has to clear the transmission and the edge of the block right here so we're going to go ahead and put it into place and uh, then we'll move to the other side and do the same thing at this point i've got both of them on so you can see this side and uh, of course the other side you can see what i'm talking about where it's knocked in to clear transmission and the engine block it probably I'm sure he test fits these. Um, we may have to move stuff around, so we're not real sure 100% where this thing's going to be setting um, as far as the, the way these things move. Obviously, this one's loose right now, but we may have to cock this thing or index it a different direction. But for now, um, we're just gonna wait until I hear back from him on the oil drains, and or the sorry, the feed lines, and uh, then we'll move on from there. Well, it's been a couple days, but I got the new um, bolts that go in. So the banjo bolts that go in here. Um, so remember, we're gonna keep this facing down and um, we need a washer, a crush washer here on both sides. But we can go ahead and put this on the turbo at this point. As you guys know, I sp um, spun this housing uh, and this is going to face on the inside. Man, I cannot hold on to those washers. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and screw this into place and then hopefully we can get this clocked where it needs to be and go ahead and tighten these up. A couple things I've done, as you can see, I've got the oil line plumbed in here. It's right here, but I don't have the oil pan on. Now, all these instructions are based around it being in the car and um, well, obviously we're not in the car. We're gonna put it in all as one unit, but uh, what I did do after I put that on, because I think I'm going to have to reclock this, you can see it's still loose. I haven't tightened these up yet. Um, 
once I get the oil pan on, I should be able to tighten these back ones up. But the front one, I went ahead and put our um, C-clamp or that little um, retaining clip that holds the front housing together. Uh, I moved it here on the outside so I have better access to it once I get it on maybe like the K-member. So um, if I have to do any clocking with this outer housing, uh, I wanna be able to get to that and be able to move it. So uh, I did move that C-clip around to this side so I can access it. But for now, um, I, I'm still waiting on one other thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put um, these guys on. So these are the wastegates, and I was looking to see, there's, if you look in the pictures, there's really only one way this can go on there. But um, what I'm going to do is, you're not gonna need these two guys. These are if you were to buy this from him and need to weld on to another pipe. It's already built into his headers, but you do need this guy. And so what this does, is this seals up against the bottom of that valve um, and then goes into the recessed point here. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use his pictures as guidance because it looks like he has the bolt on the top as far as the clamps go. So we're gonna put one clamp here, one clamp here. And um, like I said, he's got the hinge on the bottom. So I'm gonna try to replicate what he has in the picture and then just make sure, like I said, guys, this piece you can see it's um goes fits really nicely in the bottom so if you're concerned about when you take these clamps apart they have those in them you're not going to be using those but anyway let's see if we can get this thing in place now that we've got this snug down um and don't get crazy tight on this stuff guys just get it snug um don't don't overpower it i'm going to go ahead and put um so you see we have two openings here and so i'm going to plug this bottom one the one closest to the ground here and then the other one, we're gonna put our barb fitting in up top. Now it says to notice the orientation in the pictures. And while the pictures aren't like super close, it looks to me like that barb fitting is going to kind of face like this direction. Um, so I'll show you guys that once I get it put on. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and snug this one down. Now we've got this snug down, the cap and the bottom. You can see the way this is facing. We're on the driver's side here, and I've got this, just according to the picture, it looks like it's facing, I don't have a good top shot of it, but it looks like it's facing away from the exhaust pipe and kind of towards the front of the vehicle. And then this one, um, this one, you have a couple options. If you're gonna use a boost controller, which I think I am, um, I did go ahead and put this bar fitting on, but if not, you don't have to put this in. However, um, either way, you can go ahead and put it in because even if you're not, you still have a vent. So I did go ahead and put it in and I faced it just like it was in the picture, which is almost even with the plug down here at the bottom. So we've got this all snug down. Like I said, guys, do not over tighten this stuff. Everything's good. We will go to the other side and get it knocked out. We now have the other side on. So we've got both sides where they need to be. Uh, a couple things to take note of, guys. Remember to put that ring in the, that sets in that recessed portion here. And um, you'll also notice that I put the clamps facing the opposite way. So the bolts are on the bottom and the hinge is on the top. So don't over tighten these, just make sure you get them in the collars. So obviously you gotta get them lined up. I like putting this first one on first because it has a flex pipe in it and then we can move over to the other one. It just seemed a little bit easier doing it that way. I put the cap on the top of this one to cap that off. And then this other one you could see is kind of facing down. You can barely see it, let me see facing kind of down and towards the front of the motor and then this one here i couldn't really get a good picture of so i'm just going to leave it loose for now because like i said i probably will run a boost controller and um, if not then we'll just leave that um, vented to the atmosphere the other thing guys is it comes with a series of springs the spring that's installed in it is a five pound spring i'm just going to leave that for now uh, I'm going to talk to him and see kind of what he thinks with the stock motor and kind of what I've set up, what I need to do there. I may just leave that, and I don't know if that can be, um, I, that may just be where we start from now. That can always be changed um, from under the vehicle. So I'm not really concerned about that. But at this point, I'm kind of waiting on some more parts. And um, this, isn't, this isn't like some of the other projects that I do in the fact that um, I know exactly what's going together, what I'm going to need, and so I have it all here ready. Um, I'm learning as I go, so hopefully you guys um, can bear with me as we go through this project. I know it's been a really long time coming, but um, we got a few things accomplished. At least the headers or the manifolds, the turbos are on the motor, and um, I did get new gaskets here. I 
these were new but I'm just one of those guys that I want to I want to replace if they've ever been bolted down same thing you could see my oil pan gasket it was brand new but I just I'm gonna put a new one on it so I ordered one of those I really need to get the oil pan in place next and um, and then I'm waiting on bolts here because I want to put new bolts in as well so at this point I think we're effectively done here until I get a few more parts in but there is one other thing I want to show you guys here um, I got a new map sensor so the map sensor that's in the factory cars uh, only measures a certain level of boost and obviously we're going to go over that it's just a one bar map sensor so i decided to go with a three bar map sensor and i'll list this one down below uh, it came highly recommended by people on ls1 tech and then of course john at hair on speed um, told me that this is what he normally uses if he is using a stock manifold so um, just be careful pulling this old one out you just pull this tab back don't break this off if you just move this back a little bit you'll have enough room to kind of fold this one the old one forward and sneak it out and uh, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and push this new one into place and it can really be done with one hand, just like that. It's that simple, it's in. I might put, it doesn't feel quite as tight as the other one. So what I may do is I may put a, um, a zip tie around that just to make sure it sets snug. Anyway, um, like I said, I think we're effectively done for this video, but guys, hopefully you are enjoying this build. Like I said, bear with me because it's not something I've done before. So, um, and I don't think many people have done this. This kit's relatively new. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the build process. But if you are liking it, please like always go down there and smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are not subscribed, please go down there, hit that subscribe button. While you're down there, make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see us keep piecing this thing together.